Hi, and welcome to the next episode of the building the PS01 synthesizer. This video will be slightly different than the previous ones because it's going to focus mostly on software. Um, the previous ones were talking about hardware, but uh, I wanted to share with you um, some of the hurdles I had to deal with the software running the, the synthesizer and uh, pattern that I, uh, that I decided to use. So the PSO1 has a lot of inputs and outputs. It has a keypad, has encoders, has multiple additional buttons. Um, soon there are going to be also a MIDI controller. And of course, there's a clock that dictates uh, how everything's being played. Uh, we also have uh, you know, a LCD screen. We have the LEDs on the keypad. And we have the synth engine itself, where we have to tell it what is the note that's supposed to be played. So with all those inputs coming into uh, the microcontrollers and all the outputs that um, basically have to be said, uh, like reconciling what is supposed to be done there um, starts to get uh, a bit tricky. And while doing that, um, this made me think about two projects from the front-end world. Um, first one is React and second one is Flux. Um, React is basically a, a component library allowing you to build um, visual components uh, in a way where uh, each of them has a, a certain state. Um, and when that state is being updated, is being the, the components has to be re-rendered. And what is really neat there is the re the what's being re-rendered is actually being re-rendered into a, a, a virtual representation of what's there and then it's being reconciled with what's actually on the screen and in that process it's able to figure out what actually changed and just update the things um, that changed I mean there is a some discussion about is actually virtual them actually faster um, than not or, or not using that. But you know, in this case, we're not having any DOM or virtual DOM, but the idea of just updating what changed is very valuable. The other project, um, which is kind of complementary to React, is Flux. And Flux talks more about how the data flows uh, through the system. So this is the, the graph that uh, is on a, basically the flow documentation, which is when an action occurs, um, it's basically being sent to the, to a dispatcher. Uh, the, the action can be log in, log out, uh, set the value of, of, of X to something. It's being sent to the dispatcher. Um, dispatcher decides uh, who is the one that actually is supposed to respond to that action. Um, and after that, basically, the, um, the store is being updated with uh, the new values, and then uh, the view is being told to render itself with uh, the new state. So then in the view, if there is a, a button or any kind of interface, um, if the user actually you know, clicks a button or taps a button, and the view can issue an action back to the dispatcher saying like, hey, update uh, another thing that I am um, asking you here. So with this kind of flow, the data uh, always stays concise. Uh, there's no really a problem of like multiple, you know, multiple places changing the, the, the same values in a store and then problem with, with subscribing to it, which in most cases happens um, if you can observe the value of, um, of specific um, properties in a store. So this is an example view um, from the PS01. Uh, um, this actually is running on uh, on Mac OS, but uh, just because uh, just recently I added the ability to, to comp compile between the embedded and the desktop. So in here, uh, basically, uh, we see the top, uh, which is the basically the, the current uh, waveform that we are playing. And the bottom one is um, the current note that is actually being played, right? So... Um, it already you can see that you know redrawing the whole screen in this case would be wasting a lot of cycles. So we can just the things that update are um, those two. So now um, what we could do is to to make it to make it easier if we change the note right the current note has been changed. Um, we can do um, 
two things very quickly. First, we can take the current state before we change the node um, and ask to redraw it, but in this case as disabled like or empty. So what it will do, it will paint over what was drawn in the um, you know previous time that it has been updated, making the previous state previous state uh, clear. Then we can update the state and ask again, like well, redraw the state. And in this case, redraw it with the uh, you know the correct updated state. And with this, we can just redraw this tiny part part of the screen and save a lot of cycles when uh, when updating. So with this implementation, well, this implementation is in, in C and C++, I couldn't really implement Flux exactly as it is. Um, so I had to kind of make some concessions also, uh, make some different, um, uh, bit of different decisions there. But the principle, I try to kind of in, keep the principle there. So for example, yeah, we have a, we have a keypad, right? A keypad that you can press the button on. And then you have some sort of dispatcher, right? So some, something that decides uh, where this vent is being fired. So you press a button and you, yeah, you trigger an action on, on the dispatcher. So dispatcher then figures out what is the handler, like who is supposed to actually do this action. And once figures it figures it this out, uh, it asks it to handle uh, that action. And then we also have uh, a store, right? That we can uh, that the that the action uh, can update. But the handler, it might basically have like the logic of handling that action, like the the, the handling of that action um, can, for example, trigger another action. It can tell the dispatcher like, okay, based on what you've given me, I want you to trigger a different action that will have um, you know follow a different logic, or the handler can, well, not or, like it can be also, um, the handler can also just update the store saying like, okay, here's the new value of something. Um, once that's done, uh, we tell the handler uh, again saying handle store update, which means you know a specific key in a store has been updated, please redraw that specific part. So that's the flow, um, here's some, pseudocode um, for uh, for what what we're doing here so there's a, the keypad class um, so for example that's a, a driver to the for the keypad right so like when you press the button on the keypad the key down um, method is being called there then we have the UI class which contains the store and the store has all the all the possible values there um, it has the dispatch uh, action method uh, which takes an action and some arguments that can be passed uh, and it also has a get current page. In, in, in this kind of scenario, when I said like you can have multiple handlers, um, each handler in here is called a page. So the page, uh, like I mentioned before, has the handle action method, uh, which you can see has exactly the same uh, parameters as dispatch action because dispatch action just passes it over. And then a handle store update uh, with a key um, argument where you pass what is exactly uh, what did you change in in the store so given that okay we pressed the key um, the key down method would call the dispatch action with you know the action is action key down and an argument because it knows what's the key it can pass that like okay the key, key x has been pressed then the dispatch action will first gets the current page. Like what is the current page uh, currently being shown? What is the, 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 the handler of the whole thing? And then asks it to handle the action, which you can see that exactly the same arguments of dispatch action, right? It basically just passes the um, arguments straight there. The handle action uh, has a reference to the store. So it basically says active key equals key X. So now in the store, we have um, that specific value. And then the handle action is the one that calls itself with handle store update, um, telling it what is the key that has been updated in the store. In this case, is the active key um, uh, active key uh, key. <laughs> um, and this is done uh, this way because uh, there is no really a, a quick easy solution to. 
um, subscribe to changes to um, to a value. You might have getters and setters, but then it kind of gets complicated. Uh, I really try to keep it very small to fit in them on the microcontroller. So we're just, you know, handle action just calls the handle uh, store update. And when that's being done, um, I introduce here two additional classes. So there's a screen class, which has all the drawing uh, procedures and the synth class. Um, so when you call the set note, it basically will play that specific note. So with this, the handle store update, because it knows what's the key that has been updated and it knows what the downstream dependencies would require to change, it will call the draw active key. It will not draw the background because it doesn't have to, like that doesn't change. And then it will also call the set note telling like, okay, here's the, the, the new key that's supposed to be played. Okay, so this is the kind of um, overall design of the whole thing. Let's jump into the actual source code of PSO1 and see how it's being implemented in there. So here we are in the sources of the PSO1. We're actually in the uh, main file here. I'm not going to go through the whole source code. Uh, there's a lot of work in progress here. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how the things that I just showed in the, um, in the, in the drawings, how they're actually getting implemented. So for example, here we have um, the loop method. So every time, basically, you know, we keep, we're in a, in a constant loop. So what we want to do here is dispatch action called tick. And tick is basically, yeah, like, you know, the the internal timer uh, has increased and we have the millis um, method, well, function, um, that returns number of milliseconds um, since it starts. So in this case, yeah, we call the dispatch action and say like, okay, this is the, the action. The first argument is yeah, number of milliseconds that um, that we counted from, from the boot up or from the start. So then we have the dispatch action. And in this case, um, the actual selection of which page is being shown hasn't been implemented yet. Um, but you can basically imagine here, a, a, you know, a long um, switch statement saying like, okay, if current page is this, dispatch on, on that one. Um, but yes, in this case, what it basically just does, it just says, okay, handle that action. And you can notice that actually we have uh, two properties here. There's a store and there's a previous store. And this kind of goes into um, what I mentioned before with like first redrawing the previous state as inactive and then drawing the, the, uh, the new um, state. So this is why we're holding two instances of state, the previous one and the current one. And yeah, after we handle everything, we just can overwrite the previous one with the current one. So um, additional thing that you may notice here, there is a dispatch action action page in it um, when we start. So after we initialize all the pages, uh, we can basically send an action to it saying like, okay, um, please set yourself up um, because yeah, we're gonna start sending an action um, to you in the, in the future. Uh, mostly it's separated in that way because uh, we're going to keep the, um, the, the part that um, constructs the class and part that actually dispatches the action as a separate thing, and mostly due to some C++ um, things. So we, ha we call the handle uh, action on the scale, uh, scale test page. And this exact example isn't, isn't the same as, um, as the screenshot I showed you with pressing the key and then it plays it. In this case, it basically goes through the scale automatically every second it goes to the next note when it reaches the, the, the last C, it goes back to the first one. So we have, yeah, a switch, a switch, um, switch uh, command here that, you know, first checks if it's an uh, action page in it, well, just go to init and in initialize yourself. If it's action tick, so basically, you know, um, every, every hit of the loop, it will see like what is the last tick which we're actually storing in here. If it's more than a thousand, which which means basically 
a second elapsed um, since that, then we're gonna set the last tick to the current uh, current tick, and we're gonna fire an action uh, st next uh, action. And you can notice that um, the, the arguments are empty. There is a, a macro called no args, which says basically, yeah, it's an empty list of uh, list of arguments. But this is an example of an action that, well, yes, it updates the store, um, but there's nothing to act on that value. But actually, after some point, it there is, and this is why it calls a separate action that will act on this. So once the uh, st next action is being called, what it's going to do it's going to increase the current note. So basically, go higher. Um, if it's above uh, above the uh, the high C, it will go down to zero, starting with the low C, and then um, it calls the handle store update with the store st current note. So the, the SD current node has been updated, the one over here. And then we can go to the handle store update, which basically checks like what has changed. Is it the store SD update node, uh, SD current node? Yes, it has, it, we updated the SD current node. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set the frequency of the current node that we're supposed to play. We're gonna redraw the key from the previous store that I mentioned. We're gonna redraw it with a color white, the same as the keys. So basically we're gonna blank it out. And then we're gonna draw the key with the current node in the, with the color blue. So you're gonna see the next version. And then we're just, we're just gonna ask the display um, to update and, and do that. Um, in here, actually, there's also implementation of the uh, the current wave um, changes, but yeah, I mean that's that's the kind of general idea that I went here with this, and um, and yeah, I know that this is not exactly um, you know, some great discovery here with this pattern, but I think it makes handling this kind of reconciliation much much easier, and um, and you know, given the limitation of C and C++ and microcontrollers because yes, yeah, like this is running on a desktop, but it's the idea is that it always has to be able to fit on a microcontroller. I had to kind of make some um, sacrifices there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you think about us in, in the comments or on Twitter or whatever you like. And if you liked this video, um, press like and subscribe. So see you later.